Hi everyone and welcome to FedFest uh, 2021. Uh, my name is Holly Murray and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today uh, representing Donegal ETB. So I am a history and geography teacher based in Finn Valley College and we are a further ed uh, school because we offer PLCs and we're also a post-primary school as well. So a little bit about me, um, I'm an Apple teacher, I am a Microsoft um, expert and I'm also a Wriggle Connect ambassador and just after Easter I have been appointed to the PDST in a new EAL role. So uh, technology enhanced learning plays a massive role for me in my classroom. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter, uh, tellholly1 if any of you are on Twitter, um, Twitter is fantastic um, for CPD. And just as well, a massive thanks to Ashley Stevens uh, for inviting me here uh, to talk today all about technology enhanced learning. So the tools that I'm going to be talking about now are the little uh, tips and tricks I'm going to be giving you are all about accessibility and inclusion. So how can you make your classroom more accessible? How can you make your content more inclusive um, for the students that's in front of you? And I'm going to be aiming this towards EAL students and students with dyslexia. So little uh, tips and tricks that I've picked up um, that I would like to share with you. Now, for me, it's not about learning every single tool that's out there. That's not what um, technology means to me. It's about finding the right fit because there is no one size fits all um, for our students. Okay, so basically what made me reflect on my own teaching practices was when I completed my UDL badge, so my Universal Design for Learning. So this is when I really looked at my accessibility and inclusion a lot closer and how could I improve um, for my own students. Okay, so first of all, what I'd say is some simple changes now, if you're wanting to make plan for this for September, uh, some simple changes you can make very simply is changing the fonts on your document, number one. Okay, changing it to dyslexia or open dyslexic or lexia or another one I would add on there now is Verdana. Okay, and again, these are all free to download. You can increase the, the line spacing in your documents. Okay, again, the touch of a button and it's making your content um, so much more accessible. Permit the typing of work where possible in severe cases of dyslexia. Okay, very, very simple, but very, very effective. Okay, so as I say, start off simple. Translate options then, okay? So if you use Google Docs, for example, you can translate your full document under the Tools tab, all right? And then if you use Office 365, if you use Microsoft Word, your Translate button is located under your Review tab, okay? Now, don't take for granted that the, the teachers in your school know how to do this, okay? Because it may be very simple for some teachers, but some people, they've, they, they never actually realized that they could do this. So this one change for your, for your classroom and then onto your school community can have a massive impact for all the students in your school, not just for your students. Okay, then another thing is uh, voice typing and dictation. So what do I mean by that? I mean that once you click on these buttons, okay, so voice typing in Google Docs, again, located in the Tools tab, and dictation, which is a little microphone like this in Microsoft Word, you're talking to the screen and then it is typing for you. So again, that is making um, school life more accessible, especially for students um, that suffer from dysgraphia, okay? And one other very simple change you can make is, now apologies, I'm keep moving my face around here. Change the background of your document from white to yellow. And again, this really, really um, helps students with dyslexia. So I'm just going to demo some of this for you now. So I'm going to click out of the PowerPoint for a second. Okay, so just let me click out of here. And I'm gonna show you now, first of all, how you can change the background to yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to open up a Google Doc here. Okay, you'll see now my Google Doc is yellow and I have this set to default, which means that I only ever had to do it once. And every time I open a new Google Doc now, it does it for me. So how do I get this? So when I'm in a Google Doc here, click on File, okay, and scroll down and click on Page Setup. Okay, so click on page setup, and this brings you then to your page color. Okay, so now some students also work well using a blue, like a very light blue, like this kind of pale blue here. And then you'll see here, I have saved to default, and then you just press okay, and that's it. I never have to do that again because it automatically does it for me. Okay, so it's really, really powerful. Then if I go to tools, here's my translate option, here's my voice typing. 
Okay, so I don't have to type anything. I just talk to the screen. So the translate button, let's see what that does. Choose my language, click on Arabic, and just click on translate. Okay, so again, simple but effective um, for your EAL students in front of you. Again, then Google is going to give me a translated copy up above here. So you can keep your original um, document. Okay, again, this also works in a Microsoft Word document as well. Okay, so let's open Word here and let me just pull this down again. So again, if you go to your design tab, okay, so here in a Microsoft Word document. So if I click on the word design and I go over here to the right and I click on page color, there's my color. So I'm just gonna click on yellow. So that's my yellow document done there for me now. Okay, if I click on my home tab, there's my dictate button. Again, just press that and talk to the screen. So please complete this page for homework tonight, full stop. Okay, so you can see there the dictate picks me up very, very well despite my very Northern uh, Donegal accent. And then you also have this editor function as well, which is fantastic for spelling and grammar and punctuality and stuff like that. So again, very basic changes. Okay, uh, very simple, um, very easy to do. Again, just play around with it and get used to where the buttons are located on your screen. Okay, so now to bring accessibility to a different level completely. I'm going back into my PowerPoint here now and I want to show you something called PowerPoint Live. Okay, so basically what that does when it's just loading here in the background, I am going to demo for you now how you can present with different subtitles. Okay, so whenever I was presenting at the start, I had clicked here, always use subtitles. And that's okay if you have just one student in your class who speaks a different language, okay? What happens then when you have a number of students, what do you do? So I'm just gonna click here now on present live, okay? And I'm gonna go on to my own phone here now for a second, okay? So basically what this does is now, you're standing up in the front of your class and your students now are going to join you on their phones and they're going to be able to pick their very own subtitle language. Okay, now this is amazing that this is free um, in PowerPoint. It's just fantastic. So once this loads up on the screen now, your students can take a picture of the QR code or they can type in the link. And on the right-hand side of the screen here, you can see it'll tell you the number of people that have joined, which is really important because obviously if you have 20 students, you need to see that the 20 of them have joined. So I'm just gonna take a picture of this now. Okay, and you should see here now that one person has joined, hopefully. Okay, yeah, so one person has joined. Now, obviously, if this was live, it would be great because you could see more and more people. So as I'm talking here now, you can see along the bottom of the screen, the subtitles are coming up there just in English, okay? So it's really good. And then your students then can pick the chosen languages that they want. So again, you might have five students in front of you. They can all have their own subtitles. So you're teaching your class in English, obviously. They're reading the subtitles then in, in French or Spanish or Polish or whatever. It's absolutely fantastic. And again, you can keep track here of the number of people that have joined in. So PowerPoint Live is very, very effective. I think it takes accessibility to a different level completely. Um, I don't know of any other applications that can do that. Yes, you can turn on subtitles in one language, but I think being able um, for your students with different languages to be able to join into that, it is just amazing. Then you can click here on end session. Okay, this then will allow the participants um, to give your, or your presentation a score. Now, it might not always be students, it could be your colleagues as well. Okay, so that for me has just taken accessibility just to different, and at, at the fact that it's free, it's just, it's just absolutely amazing, all right? Now, another thing I want to demo for you now really quickly is something called the Immersive Reader, okay? And basically what this does is it reads text back to you and you have different grammar and different options like that. So I'm going to demo this for, for a change, not in Word or OneNote or Teams. I'm going to demo it for you in the Whiteboard app, okay? So this is an app. I absolutely love using this, okay? So you see here now, this is a whiteboard that I was working on together with my students, now, the immersive reader will only work with typed text. That's one thing I will say. This written text doesn't work for yet. So if you're in your Microsoft Whiteboard app, and I'm going to click here on my three dots, and here is immersive reader, okay? And again, this is in Word. It's in Teams. 
Okay, it's in OneNote, it's in loads of places. So what does this do? It reads the text back. The Paris Basin is a core region with a high pop. Okay, you can change the female to a male voice. You can increase the speed up or down. It's just magic. Um, you've got text preferences then. Okay, so if I click here on text preferences, I can change the text up or down. I can change the fonts. Okay, I can change the background to different colors. Okay, again, I can increase the speed up or down. Again, fantastic for somebody with a visual impairment. I can turn on uh, nouns and syllables and stuff like that. So fantastic um, for teaching literacy. Okay, and then over here, I have a one line focus and I have a three line focus. Again, amazing for students with dyslexia. It takes away that visual crowding that they suffer from. And I have more translate options here then as well. So here's Arabic and you can translate the word or you can translate the full document. Okay, and then you can have it read back to you. Okay, and then if you just click out of it then, come out of immersive reader mode, you're back into your original um, whiteboard then. So it's really, really powerful stuff. Very, very effective. Um, again, the immersive reader is now found in a number of applications. Again, if you want further information on CPD for dyslexia, I would definitely check out the Microsoft Educator Center. They have loads of free courses that you can do um, in your own time and you can collect your badges as well. So I just want to say thank you so, so much for listening to me. Apologies again if I was going 100 mile an hour, but I just wanted to demo uh, some of those fantastic features um, that I've been using in my classroom. And again, thank you to Ashley Stevens for inviting me here today. And I wish everybody the best of luck with their presentations. Again, reach out on Twitter if there's anything you need. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.